Yo, what's going on guys? Sam here. Looking at the 2019 iPhones, I think we've all felt sort of the same way. That they look the same, they feel the same, and they have bigger weird square camera bumps on the back, but the upgrades probably not gonna be worth it. Well, today we got a confirmed list of features for what we're expecting to see from the 2019 iPhones courtesy of Bloomberg. Also info about the new Apple Watch coming, new AirPods, a new HomePod on the way, new MacBook Pro 16 inch model, and new iPad. So we have so much info to break down today. If you're excited for this video and whatever Apple's been working on it, drop a like down below. It does seriously help me out and hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's go ahead and get started. The first big detail that Bloomberg confirms today is the fact that some of the iPhones are going to be called Pro models. Now they don't outright say like for sure, but Pro has been thrown around a lot lately. It would make sense as a way to differentiate the highest end iPhone models from you know the lower end $749 ones. One. So Apple is probably gonna use that when they name these iPhones. There are gonna be three new models in total, two pro models and one, I guess, regular or non-pro model. That regular model is gonna have a 6.1 inch LCD screen. It look very, very similar to the iPhone 10R, except for a square camera bump on the back because the cameras on that phone are getting upgraded to a dual lens system with a regular standard angle lens and then a telephoto lens for enhanced portrait mode. The much larger iPhone upgrade is happening on the iPhone 11 Pro or the iPhone Pro or the higher end models. Those are getting triple cameras on both. One standard angle, one telephoto like we've had on the dual camera iPhones forever, but this year Apple is adding the third ultra wide angle camera, which is going to let you capture that really wide field of view. And also like there's a cool feature they're working on in the software where you'll be able to crop in objects that may have gotten cut out in a normal photo in post. So after you take a photo, you'll be able to like post crop out, which is um, pretty cool. But it's not just a new lens. Apple's also working to be more competitive against things like the Samsung Galaxy S10 and Note 10, and especially the Google Pixel line. Improved low light functionality for photos is coming as well as a generalized higher resolution set of photos that Bloomberg claims could uh, compete more closely with some higher end cameras, but that argument is always like, yes, but also not really. For video, it's a very similar story. Big upgrades happening this year. Apple's going to allow you to edit video basically while you're recording it. So you're gonna be able to crop or resize or retouch or color correct or apply filters to video while you're actually recording it rather than having to wait until it has already been recorded. Now, I think all of this, aside from being powered by the new triple camera setup, that is going to be powered by the new A13 chip. And Apple's actually working on a new coprocessor inside that they are calling the matrix coprocessor. This is gonna handle computational or math heavy tasks to offload some of the weight or computing pressure on the main CPU, the actual A13 Bionic chip, and I guess try to make things more efficient, which is good because another thing that we've heard time and time and time again is that battery life is going to go up substantially this year. We've seen a number of like little baby upgrades over the years with battery life, but this year is supposed to be a significant and noticeable jump across all models. I mean, the battery life on the 10 S Max and 10R from 2018 is already really good, but I feel like for the regularly sized iPhone 10S, it, it gets me through a day mostly, but it definitely doesn't have as much battery as the other two models. If you opt to get one of the Pro models, so the 5.8 inch OLED or 6.5 inch OLED iPhone Pro this year, you're going to be getting a couple of bonus features. Not only that triple camera, also reverse wireless charging. You will be able to charge AirPods, according to this report, on the back of your iPhone, which is gonna come in really handy when you're like me, you show up at the gym, you're really excited for a workout, and then you realize all of your charge is gone in your AirPods. You could just set it on the back of your phone for like five or 10 minutes before you work out and maybe warm up while you're doing that and then have you know audio in your ears for the next hour or two. So that's sweet. That's something Samsung introduced earlier in 2019 and it's coming to the iPhone as well. So good to see Apple staying competitive here. Also for the 2019, Pro iPhones, some are going to have a matte finish. Now it's still totally unclear which ones are going to have this possibly grippier, but like Apple Pencil 2-esque uh, mattish design, but we know that Apple is working on one. We've heard this for a number of months now, and it will hopefully look cooler. Like I could see, you know, a matte black iPhone Pro looking pretty tempting. Now, if you drop your phone a lot, there's also some good news here because with the slightly tweaked materials that Apple's gonna be using, again, I think this is just gonna be for the matte models, but could be for the glossy models as well, you're gonna get improved shatter resistance. So if you drop your phone a lot, you know, there's a slightly better chance that it's not gonna crack on your first try. Now, to what extent we have zero idea, it could be super shatter resistant, it could be just a little bit more shatter resistant, but uh, I'm sure there'll be 
plenty of videos on YouTube demonstrating that functionality as soon as the iPhones come out. Now for next year's iPhones, we're hearing that Touch ID could actually come back uh, in the form of in-screen fingerprint sensing. But this year, Apple is sticking with straight up Face ID, so if you like that technology, it's gonna be here. If you don't like it, it's still gonna be here. Apple's working to improve it though with a new multi-view or angle sensor system to where your phone can actually be laying flat on a table and scan your face. Because that's something that's really problematic is whenever your phone is on the table before, you can just kind of put your fingerprint on there and you'd be in, or if you weren't like looking at it directly, you could unlock it. Now Apple's working on a way to unlock your phone when it's laying flat on a table, which could be a great way to curb like one of the bigger issues with Face ID. The fact that it always had to be angled at you in a particular way. And this is a feature that I think will come to all three new models this year, but still sort of unclear. Next up, water resistance said to be getting a significant upgrade. Now, right now, I think the 2019 or 2018 iPhones, like the 10s and the 10s Max, are rated up to two meters of water for 30 minutes or one meter of water, something right around there. Bloomberg says that this year in 2019, that's going up significantly. How big this change is going to be, we don't exactly know, but they make it sound like it's going to be a pretty big deal. And if you're noticing what Apple's doing here, they're touching water resistance. They're going to touch battery life. They're going to touch the processor. They're going to touch the camera. They're going to touch reverse wireless charging. Uh, there's supposed to be a faster power brick inside of the box. Like Apple's touching every other part of the iPhone, but the design itself this year to make it feel like a lot is changing when really, you know, the overall design and functionality is going to be pretty, pretty similar to last year. For this year, that's basically the story of the 2019 iPhones. They are getting some nice upgrades. It's just, you know, a lot of stuff all the way around the iPhone, which is cool. It's a very balanced upgrade upgrade this year. It feels like everything was almost upgraded in proportion with each other. Now moving on to AirPods and the HomePod. Bloomberg says that new AirPods like the Pro model or AirPods 3 aren't actually coming out until 2020. I was hoping and anticipating that they would launch at the end of 2019, like alongside the new 2019 iPhones. Apparently they have not really been pushed back. They've just been scheduled for release sometime in 2020, maybe in March, just like AirPods 2 were released in March of 2019. In March of 2020, we could see some new AirPods. Now we've heard things from a new matte finish, just like the new iPhones are going to have, to also a new space gray color for AirPods. Bloomberg only cites two confirmed upgrades though. Noise cancellation, which we've been hearing for a while, that would be pretty cool, and also actual water resistance. Because while AirPods like survive a lot in the water now, they're not actually, you know, certified to do that. They just kind of work coincidentally. For HomePod fans, if you like your first HomePod, Apple is working on a second one, likely gonna be smaller, I think, but Bloomberg just says the tweeters are gonna be down from seven, you know, the like higher range speakers that go in a speaker component, from seven to two. So I think it's gonna be a lot smaller, definitely a lot cheaper, and Apple's definitely trying to position this for people that don't wanna spend that much money on a smart speaker. I'm sure it's gonna have Siri functionality and all the good stuff from the HomePod, just probably be a little bit quieter, maybe not as good sound quality and it has to be smaller if there's not going to be as many speaker components on the inside. So that's coming as well sometime in 2020, probably alongside AirPods. Now for the Apple Watch Series 5, we've heard so many things. Is it going to come out? Is it not? Are the new finishes just for the Series 4? We did see that leak a couple days ago where titanium and ceramic were confirmed to be coming back due to some leaked screenshots or videos inside of a Watch OS beta. So it's confirmed that Apple has new models coming. Bloomberg still leaves it ambiguous whether or not these are going to be up upgrades for the Series 4 or actual like distinct Series 5 models. What Bloomberg does say is that new Apple Watches are definitely coming. Like new models are confirmed to be on the way. They say that the upgrades this year will be much more muted. So if they are considering these upgrades from the Series 4, I assume they will be called the Series 5 or maybe like the Series 4.1 or something like just a little bit above what we had last year. But it doesn't look like any significant changes are coming aside from new titanium and ceramic finishes. And I look forward to seeing how those watches look. For iPads, Apple has some good stuff coming as well. Pro upgrades are on the way as well as a new entry-level iPad. The entry-level iPad is going to be upgraded from 9.7 to 10.2 inches. No idea if the price tag on that is going to increase. The larger upgrades, of course, happening on the Pro models. So both the 11 and 12.9 inch iPads are likely going to be getting square camera bumps. Bloomberg does confirm they will have dual camera setups for the first time ever and also faster processors. But the actual design of the Pro models going to be remaining the same as those just got the major upgrade similar to the Apple Watch in 2018. Closing out this report is a bit of info on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So it's going to be around the same size as the body of the existing 15 inch, but the bezels on the screen, like we've heard from another source, are going to get a bit slimmer. So the body 
body's gonna remain the same, but the screen size is going to increase from 15.4 inches to somewhere around the 16 inch range, marking the biggest MacBook that Apple has released since the 17 inch model was discontinued all the way back like a long time ago in 2012. I thought that was more recently, but no, we're going on like the six, seven, eight year mark now. Now, amazingly for all the detail that Bloomberg has, like feature by feature, spec by spec for the 2019 iPhones, and even talking about the finishes on the Apple watches and about AirPods 3, they don't tell us that much about the 16 inch MacBook Pro. We have no idea about the exact look yet. We have heard the keyboard is going back to scissors, so it will be reliable once again. It's going to have a good processor inside and the price could be around 3000 bucks, but Bloomberg has not confirmed any of that. Just the fact that a new MacBook Pro is expected uh, at Apple's September event, or at least sometime later in 2019. So Apple still has a ton of products up their sleeve. We just saw the Apple card. We're getting into busy season and I'm super excited to be with you guys along for the ride. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new and if you're excited for Apple's future, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. And uh, I'll be back with you guys when we got some more news. This all looks super exciting. I can't wait for Apple's September event on September. 10th and I'll catch up with you guys in the next one.